Hello, family. I wanted to make this video because I'm, I'm being asked um, continuously in my messages, um, in the comments, you know, why do I want to take away someone's belief? Here, here's the thing. This is not just a belief, okay? At all. Because we believe in this thing, we act a certain way. We do certain things, right? When you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't just believe in that. You take 10% of your money to the church every single Sunday, Sunday after Sunday. Even if it's the belief of that you're going to be blessed or it's the fear of not being cursed, the result is the same. You lose 10% of your income to your local church. Facts. That's whether or not Jesus is real. Okay, so that's whether your belief is true or not. You're still giving your money. The fact is, I, I try to get people to think because, you know, even if you're God, even if Jesus is real, you realize that the Bible doesn't ask you for your money. It's asking you for food. Yet you take money down there. Right? You take money there. You don't take food. The problem is, like, you know your Bible says it, but you want, you're afraid of, of your pastor. You're afraid of standing up for what you know is truth. You, you rather hold to this idea that, you know, somehow, you know, God changed the, uh, the, changed the uh, tithe over from food to currency, but that's not what happened. In fact, the very book that you believe in as the inerrant word of God says don't change it, forbids you to change it. It should, be this, it, it should be done this way and forever. And if God is God, if God put something in place, wouldn't it be perfect? So if tithe was, was, food, uh, was food, wasn't it food for a reason? But you give your money to the church. And you see, and it's like, when I say this, I made a video about that and showing you guys, we give $3 million to the church every Sunday. $3 million. This is just black churches. Black people always want to talk about building their community, but we give $3 million to the church every Sunday. Something got on my arm. Every single Sunday, right? What would happen in your community? If the church literally took that tithe and used it directly the way the Bible said to use it. So I'm a fatherless child. My father wasn't there for me as a child. Um, the tithe was for the fatherless and the widows. If tithe was being used correctly, even if it was money and we accepted this idea that it was money, the tithe is still for the fatherless and the widows, right? How come when you tithe, they don't redistribute the money out to the fatherless and the widows right after church. Instead of doing that, what happens? Just think, where does the money go? Why doesn't it get, why don't, why don't the fathers and the widows get money weekly? Because you tithe weekly, right? Do they even get money monthly? If you go to a church and you are a widow or a child without a father, if you have to tithe, they're doing you wrong. The tithe is for you, not for you to give. The tithe is for you. Matter of fact, you know, I'd like to see this. If there's anybody that sees this video who goes to church and you watch your church give out that money to the, to the fatherless and the widows, please comment. Please say something. Please. I would almost guarantee that there's not one single person, one single church who does it this way. I'm not saying your church is set up to steal from you, but I'm saying that through tradition, they're set up, and that's exactly what it's doing, because you don't think. We don't think. We have to start thinking, man. The belief is destroying us. If we took that money and used that on the community, you would see an immediate change. You're talking about $12 million in a month. Wouldn't that cause some immediate change? I mean, even once you get the truth, you can keep your buildings. You don't have to go you know, read from the same book, but you can teach things that need to be taught. You don't think that would be helpful? Teach people how to really navigate this world, teaching their truth about their own history and how to move forward, mainly how to move forward, because at some point we're going to have to focus on how messed up this world is and stop talking about the past. At some point, we're going to have to really start putting our money where our mouth is and really start changing this world. Unfortunately, we have to talk about the past, but come on, we're going to have to wake up and get with it. Because at the end of the day, um, regardless of who's right, people are dying in this world. What's more important? I don't know, man. It's like, 
if I had a church, a building where people came to, to weekly for inspiration, if people were willing to contribute to it, I would take that money and invest it right back into the people. See, if somebody wanted to open up a hair salon, we make sure that's taken care of. They donate. They, they have a commitment to donate. Even if it's a commitment to donate 10 percent, they're making more money. So you would get that money back regardless. Even if it was by way of loan, you're still using your money to better the actual economy around you. But it's sad that you have to go to church, give your tithe and then go take out a loan for tuition, you know, and then go take out a loan to start your business. That's not right. You've been giving your money to the church this whole time, but you give it with this hope that somehow God is going to open all these doors for you. And that's not fact. We don't think we have we have allowed ourselves to be taught a certain story, a certain way for so long that when we hear it a different way, even if it's in your Bible, you don't want to believe it. I mean, I haven't personally saw an immediate impact um, from the video I put out on tithe, but I know a lot of you guys are more aware on tithe. I've, I get messages about it to this day, but most of you guys, well, I haven't really gotten anyone who was, who was willing to take, take a stand except for one person. They went to their pastor, showed them to show them, show, showed them to show them, um, told him to show them why they, um, collected tithe in the way that they did. And he couldn't show them and wasn't willing to stop. And they ended up leaving, you know? So it's one of those things where, you know, the video said, hey, bring your pastors to this video and show them this. Do y'all not care? I mean, my thing is, sure, you should care about if your God is real. But a lot of you come to me and argue with me, but you hadn't even, haven't even done the research. That video came out seven months ago. If you would do the research, you really wouldn't have to argue with me. Like, I'm not a person that you even have to be mad at. If you would go do the research, that would tell you everything that I can. My thing is... We don't want to do the research. I think we're afraid of losing it. But my thing is this, even if you believe in it or even if it were true, um, you're still being robbed, whether intentionally or not intentionally. You're giving your money to an entity that is not really giving that money back to you. You're making it stronger. You're making yourself weaker. That is a parasite. OK, that, it, that's a direct parasite to you. You're never going to come up because you're giving all your money away. Listen, I come from a family of 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 people who I love dearly, who never owned a house, but was tithing faithfully, but still tithe faithfully, but never owned a house. And they're 60 something years old. If they had their tithe back, they could buy land, a house and leave money for their kids, for their children. If, if they go, go on a vacation, but they're still struggling to this day. And I know what the belief isn't even true. But even if you're under. If you if you believe in that still. You're still being manipulated by the way that you're being preached to whether or not they mean to teach you wrong or whether or not it's by default um, of just, you know, wanting your money. My thing is this. I don't have to target preachers. I don't have to tell you that people are going to be out here, you know, trying to con you. You know that I don't have to call their names. If you were if you if you would just think. You wouldn't have to you wouldn't deal with them anyway, so I don't have to t address them. I'm talking to you personally. If you would just think. You would be in a better situation overall if we would just simply think, just think if a man is telling you that he follows Jesus Christ, the allegory of Jesus Christ was a person who gave his life so that others could be saved and freed. Right. And redeemed and get out of suffering. The allegory of this man is this and they want to be Jesus. Right. Their goal is to be Jesus in the flesh. Right. A form of Jesus. Let Jesus show through them. But they're multimillionaires. How do you become a multimillionaire if your goal is to be like Jesus? I'm not saying be broke, but why are you a multimillionaire in the face of somebody dying from starvation? See, and here's the thing. They have every right to be multimillionaires. Some people experience this world and they want to have nice things. And that's fine. If that's what you like, then OK. My thing is this. If you're trying to see the world affected by way of feeding people, why would you send your money to someone who is interested in, in expensive things like that? Mansions, million dollar mansions and, you know, hundred and two hundred thousand dollar cars. Why would you? I'm not talking against anybody, anybody, every everyone has the right to, 
you know, buy themselves nice things. They can do that. That's not a problem at all. If they want to have those things, who am I to condemn them for that? They got the money fair and square, whether they manipulated you or not. They don't have a gun to your head. They're not making you give this money. You're just giving it, even though the signs are right in front of you. You can see a multi-million dollar pastor complain about feeding the homeless. You know you got the wrong person. You know, you know you're giving your money to the wrong person. What do you want your money to do for you? If you want to send your money to a multi-millionaire uh, preacher or leader or whatever because they inspire you and you feel like they should be compensated, that's more than fine. That's fine. It, you should be compensated if you're putting stuff into the atmosphere or to the universe and you're making people better. But at the same time, if you are giving your money to somebody who is saying that we are in place to help people and they're not doing that, you clearly see they're not doing that. And even if they are, the, the truth of the matter is if they didn't have such a a fetish and a desire for some of the things they have, more people could be being helped. You see what I'm saying? More people could be helped. So whether they help people or not, you can say, well, Joel Osteen has billions of dollars or uh, millions of dollars and has a jet, but he still feeds people. That's amazing that he does. But if he didn't have a need for all those things, how many more people could he help? You know, why are we here? You know, everybody's here for something different. So, again, I never say that we should all think the same way, but at least think for yourself. Do you think that's right? If you think that's right, then send to it. But if you don't find that to be right, then don't send to it. Don't contribute to the problem. You see the problem. Why are you contributing to it? To me, it's clear. All you have to do is think. That's why I try not to try to, you know, give people the answers. I'm saying really just think and invest in yourself invest in yourself and see what conclusion you come to just it's, just imagine this you're in a wheelchair your whole life right you've been taught that that your your lower half didn't move now as a result of you believing this your lower half has gotten weaker if you don't use your legs whether they're broken or not they will shrink up right that's why the legs and the muscles shrivels up because of non-use right that's why your form you know shrivels up if you break it nothing's wrong with the muscle you just stop using using it so just imagine you in this wheelchair and I start telling you, man, you can walk. You've been told your whole life you couldn't walk, but you can actually walk. You've been taught your whole life that you'll walk when you finally get to this place after you die, if you're good. But I'm telling you, you can actually walk now. What if I told you that? You'd probably be upset and think I'm lying to you. But if I can get you to just think about it and you start moving your legs, you're not going to get full mobility. So you're still going to feel like this is a problem. I'm going to go back to I was just comfortable sitting here. Now my muscles hurt every day for me working them. But you don't understand. You actually feel your muscles hurting. You actually feel your brain hurting. You can feel yourself being uncomfortable in that situation. That's a good thing. It's never comfortable when you got a bunch of weight on you. Ask any bodybuilder ever. The goal is, to, is the result, though, so you go through it. You see what I'm saying? No woman ever says, I want to feel pain and labor for 12 hours. No, you want a baby. You want the result. Do you want to be free? Because it ain't going to feel good. It's not going to feel good. I'm, I, I'm, it's like... I, I, I love you guys. And it's like, I want to be gentle. But at the same time, it's like, man, we don't we're not guaranteed tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? So at the same time, it's like I'm doing you wrong. If I pull punches like you got to know the truth, you got to learn how to think. So back to the story, I'm telling you, you can walk. And all of a sudden you keep working every day. And all of a sudden you walking. Are you going to ask me what to do with the wheelchair? People say, well, if you take the belief from them, what you going to give to them next? Maybe they don't need nothing. Maybe you don't need anything. Maybe what you needed was already inside of you. Mobility. Now that you got up and walked, man, you wouldn't want anybody to give you another um, aid to walking. You wouldn't want a crutch or nothing. Man, I can walk. Right? That's what the truth is, is to you. It hurts at first, but you begin to grow into it and, and you begin to get stronger. I don't need another religion. But what do you believe in now? Why is that important? Look around you. What's more important? What you believe in, which is a thought in your mind. Or people starving every day, people dying every day, the world being so messed up the way it is. Come on now. At some point, we got to focus on now and say and really grasp that. Your mind every day. It's 99 percent of the time spent somewhere else, never, never within yourself. It's always in the past. You see, for every person that's conscious. There's a person saying that we were here first. So what? What's that mean? They're going to pack up and leave. People going to pack up and leave. It's not going to happen. You see, the fact of the matter is, look around you. Here are the problems that's in front of us right now. How can we make the world better? How can we do that? Because the people who live in today around us didn't even do these problems back then. But if every one of us can recognize there is a problem and work together to fix the problem, wouldn't the problem be fixed the same? 
Why do we have to fight one another because we realize we all been lied to? Why? Why are we arguing amongst each other? Think about that. We found out that we have been manipulated and now we are all, we are angry with, with, with one another. The only way we can grow is if we unify, is if we actually speak and understand that if someone has a different perspective than you, doesn't mean that they're evil. They have been raised with this idea. You see, a Christian doesn't think they're evil because they believe that if you don't believe in their one true Lord and Savior, that you're going to burn in hell. They don't know they're evil for thinking that you're a devil because you don't believe just because you don't share the same thought with them because they're not evil. You see what I'm saying? They're programmed. You see, if somebody can say your God doesn't exist and it angers you, you're programmed. You, it's like a, a secret spy. You know, you've been activated. If I can say Jesus doesn't exist and it angers you to the point of wanting, attack, wanting to attack me, you've been programmed. Because see, somebody could tell me that my daughter doesn't exist and that's not going to make me mad because I know they do. I know she does. That's nothing for me to get mad at. Why do we get mad? Maybe I just don't have enough information to believe in what you currently believe in. You see what I'm saying? There's no reason to argue with me and be mad with me because I haven't came to the same conclusion as you. You see, so I can put a video out and I can get somebody to respond to my video within, um, you know, 20, 20, 20, 20 seconds. The video might be 12 minutes long, 20 seconds. They already up there telling me, you know, my video is wrong. And I'm like, you couldn't have listened because I just loaded it. You know, number one. Number two is probably talking about Egypt. And if you're a Christian, you're not going to sit here and tell me you've been studying Egypt and act like you know everything. You don't, because if you did, you wouldn't be a Christian. So listen to the video. And don't argue with me. Just prove me wrong. I've never asked anybody to, to trust me and believe everything I say. That's the last place I want you in. If you do that, you got another wheelchair. Even if it's the truth. If you can't get the truth on your own and think for yourself, I've done you, I've done you no good. You see what I'm saying? You, I've done you no good at all. Research for yourself. Think for yourself. Don't allow yourself to be manipulated. If we all can get there, we'll never go through this again. You see what I'm saying? But if, if you can look at clear signs that your Bible is not being practiced the way your religion is not being practiced the way your Bible uh, says it should be, and you still go and you give and contribute to it, you should really start thinking about why you are in the predicament you're in. You see, if you say, man, you know, I've been having to work over to make ends meet. I'm struggling here. I'm struggling there. I'm behind on this. I'm behind on that, but you faithfully give your money to the church and you know the church, you know now that the church is not requiring money from you per God. It's requiring grain and food, not money. And it's, it was what you can bring. It was never be cursed, but you're being taught that and you're okay with it. You see, it's like, I can see you not being okay with the fact that Jesus didn't live, but why are you still okay with giving your money away knowing they have no right to be asking for it? You see what I'm saying? Like, even if the even if tithe was money, you had to be a Levite at the time to get a tithe. So you had to be from a certain tribe to receive that tithe or you were wrong for asking for tithe. So you really got to think about that. The people who are, t who are collecting your tithe, are they first a Levite? Number one, they're not even qualified to collect your tithe. And tithe was taken to a specific place. OK, in Jerusalem. You had to take it there. And if you couldn't, you sold it and spent it on yourself. That's the rules. So tithe is not being taught correctly, and we still we still sit here and uh and believe in it. You, and, and then you argue with me about the belief in Jesus, but it's like you haven't even taken an actual look at your religion yet to see if you're being taught the Bible you believe in correctly. See, because once you understand that you've been lied to, maybe you'll look at the rest. And what you think is making you weak is actually making you strong. You may not remember your baby teeth coming in, but I can tell you this. It hurt, but you needed those teeth to be able to eat, right, and chew. Imagine right now not having teeth. Well, I mean, some of y'all have, don't have teeth, but you probably get some, you know what I mean, but just imagine it. If you didn't have teeth, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing in my mind because I already went there, but anyway, I got my point across, man. Just, you know, I'm saying we should think, you know, we, we definitely, we need to think, and I know it doesn't feel good. I know it doesn't feel good because you start finding that you have been lied to, but that's okay. You see, because the truth makes you free. It don't always feel good when, you, when you're working out, man. But when you look in the mirror and you see that new body, that feels good. And then, and then 
all of a sudden all that pain you went through don't even matter. You say it was worth it. I have never saw a person get in the best shape of their life and then say, you know what? It wasn't was cracked up to me <laughs> ever in my life. Get with the program, man. Let's read and be, become stronger together. Holla.